weight shift control 13 for abnormal and emergency procedures. When you're up in the sky and fire becomes an uninvited guest, you've got to act fast, and you need to know your aircraft's emergency procedures like the back of your hand. Fires during flight are usually classified as engine fires or electrical fires, and here's how you deal with each. These can happen when something flammable, like fuel, oil, or hydraulic fluid, decides to cozy up to a hot surface. It might be a mechanical failure, a glitch in the engine accessories, or even a broken line. Signs of trouble include smoke, flames, or even the engine cowling showing some strange discoloration or melting. As soon as you catch wind of an engine fire, pun intended, the first move is to cut off the fuel supply to the engine, if your aircraft allows it. Leave the ignition switch on to burn up any remaining fuel in the lines. This might starve the fire and make it fizzle out. If the flames vanish, don't try to be a hero and restart the engine. But if it's an oil-fed fire, the smoke will be thick and black, unlike the brighter flames with less smoke in a fuel-fed fire. Now, about shutting off the electrical master switch, some checklists suggest it, but think twice. If the fire isn't electrical and you're not seconds away from a crash, turning off the electrical system means no distress messages on the radio and air traffic control losing track of you. Remember, if you've got a ballistic parachute system, BPS, deploying it during an engine fire might make things worse by changing the direction of the flames and potentially setting the wing or fuselage on fire. It could even burn the parachute line, and you don't want that. And here's a harsh truth. The aircraft might be damaged, losing control could be imminent it might still be on fire, or an explosion might be on the menu. In such a situation, the aircraft is expendable. What matters is getting everyone on board to safety. The first sign is usually a bit of smoke and that unmistakable smell of burning insulation. If you're in an open flight deck, you might not notice it right away. Try to identify the faulty circuit by checking circuit breakers, instruments, avionics, and lights. If you can't find it or if conditions allow, Turn off the battery master switch to cut off the possible source of the fire. If you absolutely need electrical power for the flight, you can attempt to identify the faulty circuit by turning off the electrical master switch, turning all individual electrical switches off, turning the master switch back on, and then selecting the switches that were on before the fire indication one at a time. But be warned, this might recreate the original problem. Remember, an electrical fire can escalate into a larger fire in the carriage. If the cabin is ablaze, your mission is clear. Fight the fire and get that aircraft on the ground, fast. When faced with system malfunctions during flight, maintaining composure and taking decisive actions are essential for ensuring safety. Here's how to handle different issues that may arise. In the case of an electrical system failure, it's important to note that, during day and VFR conditions, the loss of power is not an immediate life-threatening situation. Most engines have ignition systems independent of the battery. While losing communication might present challenges, pilots should refer to procedures outlined in the Airman's Information Manual, AIM. Issues with the pitot static system, such as a blocked pitot tube affecting the airspeed indicator, can be managed by relying on the feel of the aircraft. Altitude and vertical speed indicators operate independently using static pressure, providing a level of redundancy. If one fails, the other can serve as a reference, and if available, the GPS can also provide altitude readings. In the case of landing gear malfunctions, if the issue arises before or during takeoff, it's advisable to abort the flight and address the problem before attempting another takeoff. However, if a malfunction occurs during or after takeoff and the landing gear is not fully functional, the pilot must carefully evaluate the situation using aeronautical decision-making, ADM, to determine the best course of action. To minimize the risk of a propeller strike from objects flying out of the flight deck, Pilots should conduct a thorough pre-flight briefing and manage the flight deck properly. If a strike occurs, an immediate reduction in throttle is crucial. The severity of vibration guides the pilot's actions, with severe vibrations indicating the need for an emergency landing. Issues with a stuck or runaway throttle can occur during taxi or flight. On the ground, having access to the ignition system is critical for an immediate shutdown. In flight, climbing to a suitable location, shutting off the engine, and making a safe engine off landing is the recommended procedure. In the face of abnormal engine instrument indications, pilots should consult the Aircraft Flight Manual, Pilot's Operating Handbook, AFM, PO, for specific guidance. The severity of the indications should dictate the pilot's actions, and adherence to checklists is crucial. Proper flight planning with knowledge of expected winds is essential for handling emergencies related to high winds and turbulence.
Unanticipated high winds can create emergencies, especially if ground speed is slower than planned. In cases of high winds during takeoff or landing, pilots should maintain high energy throughout the climb or approach. While proper flight planning should prevent VFR pilots from encountering IMC conditions, it's important to address the emergency if it occurs. The focus should be on maintaining control and seeking assistance immediately. The goal is not instrument flying but ensuring the aircraft is under adequate control until visual references are regained. In handling these emergencies, the key objectives remain recognizing the situation, maintaining control, and seeking appropriate assistance. Safety should always take precedence over other considerations. Imagine you're flying. Everything seems fine, but suddenly, the weather takes a turn for the worse, and you can't see a thing. Now, you're in what they call instrument meteorological conditions, IMC. It's basically when you can't control your plane by just looking out the window. It's a real emergency, and you've got to act fast. You've got to trust your flight instruments. If you're heading into a cloud, ease off the throttle and descend. Going out of a cloud? Hit the gas and climb. And if you lose sight suddenly, do a 180 degree turn toward where you know there's visibility. Now, attitude control is key. That's about the position of your aircraft, how it's pitched and rolled. For planes like weight shift control ones, they're pretty stable in some directions but less so in others. So, to keep control, fly at your usual speed, adjust the throttle for climb or descent, and keep those attitude changes smooth. Turning can be tricky, especially if you're not used to it. Keep those turns gentle, no crazy angles. And always be ready for a little instability. Practice this stuff when the weather's good, so if you ever find yourself in a bind, it's not totally foreign. In a nutshell, emergencies can often be avoided by doing your homework and taking care of your aircraft. But when things do go south, remember, stay calm, trust your instruments, and make those moves that get you back to clear skies. And those parachute systems? Save those for when there's really no other option left.